Hi everyone. So sometimes students have difficulty with domain and range of exponential and logarithmic functions. So I have some examples here for you. Um, I've split this up into nine different difficulty levels. And so here's level one of finding domain and range of exponential and logarithmic functions. On this first question, we're looking for domain. So the most important thing to think about at the very beginning is that domain means the x values that we can put in. If we're asked about range, then that means the y values that can come out of the function. So in this question, we're looking for domain. And you can see that over here, we go to the left and get closer and closer to this horizontal line, which is called an asymptote. We're not ever going to cross that line on our function, so we're not going to go above. But what matters here is that down at the bottom, this is going to continue and continue and continue. And it's going to keep on going um, more and more to the right so that any x value that we put in over there to the right, uh, if we put in x equals 10 or x equals 1,000 or x equals a million, we're still going to get a value as this continues down and over to the right. So think about all the x values that can go into this function. We can put in any x values over to the left, uh, like negative a million, and we can put in any x values over to the right, like positive one million. And so we would say that the domain here is all real numbers. Now, one way to express this is all of the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, and that is the way that the answers are expressed here in our options down below. So this negative infinity to positive infinity, it means the same thing as all of the real numbers. These soft brackets mean not including the endpoints, and a hard bracket means including the endpoints. So for instance, this one would be including the 9, whereas that one would be not including the 9. Let's go to another example using these ideas. So here in a level 2 question, our notation is slightly more advanced using set notation in our answers. And this time we're being asked about the range of this logarithmic function. So remember from our first example, range is the y values that we actually hit. So now we're going to look at the heights or the y values that we hit. Notice that our asymptote is vertical on this example. So we're going closer and closer to this line where x equals negative 6. But what we care about is that all of the y values down lower and lower and lower when y is negative 100 or y is negative 1000 is all going to get hit by this function. And as this continues upward, all of the y values that are positive are going to get hit by this function as well. So again, we're going to go from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, but this time we're talking about the y values that are going to get hit, the range of values. And in our answers, the answer down here is written in this way that says all real numbers. So that's one we want. When you look at set notation like this, it just means all the y values where y is less than negative 6. And so you can read these set notations sort of as a sentence. Let's go on to level 3. In our level 3 question, again, we're going to be asked about range of this exponential function. So think for a second, range is the y values. So we're going to look for the y values that are going to get hit. And you can see on our function down here, we're not going to hit anything above negative 6. We're looking for everything negative 6 and below as y values that will actually hit. So when you look at our different options for what this could mean, we want from negative 6 down to negative infinity to be what we're looking for. But notice that we can't actually hit negative 6, so we want to be careful on this end and put our soft bracket. Now, it doesn't matter if we have them in this order or in this order. 
they mean the same thing. So you can say from negative infinity all the way up to negative 6, or you can say negative 6 all the way down to negative infinity, and your notation is talking about the same set of answers. Looking at our next level, we see right away that this is again talking about domain. And hopefully you've noticed the first thing I look at in a question is, am I looking for the domain, the x values, or am I looking for the range, the y values? You'll definitely have things switched up and get them wrong very, very often if you aren't careful with domain is x values and range is y values. So in this one, we're looking for the domain. That's the x values that we're going to be using. So it looks to me like right here, we're only going to go from positive 7 up through infinity. So when I write out my notation, I might say from 7 to positive infinity. Or I might have notation that is in set notation down here. And I have to decide between, are my looking at x values that are greater than or equal to 7, or x values that are strictly greater than 7. Notice that our asymptote implies that we're not going to cross that 7 line. And our soft bracket also implies we're not actually going to have values of 7 in this function. So we would choose x is strictly greater than 7, not that x could be equal to 7, because it couldn't. In our next level number five, we're again looking at domain. What is the domain of this exponential function? So think for a moment, domain is the x values. All right, are there any x values that cannot be put in when we look at this graph? It goes over to the left forever. It goes down and to the right forever. So it seems to me that all real numbers are going to work for the x values of this function, and therefore the domain is all real numbers. Let's look at level 6. Now this is our first level where there's no graph involved. So I mean, the quickest and easiest way to go about this is to just make a graph. So I prefer to use desmos.com. Or maybe it's desmos.org. I don't remember which one it is. But if you just put this into Desmos, your online graphing calculator, you can look at the graph and you can do it in a very similar way to what we've done before. So y equals 7 log x minus 3. Before we graph this, let's make sure we carefully notice we're looking for the range, which is the y values that happen. So let's look at our graph. So here's a graph of what's going on with 7 log x minus 3. Now, I want to do the range of this. And so think about it for just a moment. You notice that it's going down forever. It's going up forever. To me, it looks like the range is going to be all real numbers on this one. Let's go to our next level. Again, you'll see on this next level, we haven't been given a graph. So what should we do? We should just graph this ourselves. So you have to realize when you have questions like this that looking at domain and range is much simpler when you have a graph. So you take a moment, jump over to desmos.com and graph, or you could use a graphing calculator or some other way. So let's graph this. And on this one, we want both the domain and the range. So we'll have to keep these separate in our mind. So here's our graph. First, when we look at domain D, that's the x values that can occur. Um, I would say everything from 8 through infinity looks like it's good for the x values, the domain. And the range goes down forever and goes up forever. And so it looks like we're going to have all real numbers for the range. Now we would have to look at the notations in the question to see which notation is correct. But I think we're all set on that question. Next level. All right, here we have a little bit more complex function. And again, we want to find the domain and the range. So we graph it. 
we look at what's happening, and it appears on this one that there's an asymptote here at negative two, so that our domain, our x values that are happening, would go from negative two up to positive infinity, and our range would again be all real numbers. Let's look at our last level. What are the domain and range of this logarithmic function? So we want both domain and range again. We make a graph. And when we look at our graph, we have to decide, is there an asymptote involved? Well, right here looks like an asymptote, a vertical asymptote. So our domain is only going from, now notice the scale on our axis here, 2, 4, 6, 8. It's going from negative 8 to positive infinity. Those are our x values that are occurring. And for range, the y values that are occurring, again, are all the real numbers because this is going to go up forever and hit all the positive y values. This is going to continue downward forever and hit all of the negative y values. So our range is all of the real numbers. So the main thing to remember here is always first check whether you're looking for domain, that's the x values that happen in the function, or are you looking for a range, the y values that happen in the function. And if you're not given a graph, just quickly go to desmos.com, check out the graph. You should be able to find asymptotes, you should be able to zoom in and out, and really be able to determine domain and range. Okay, if there's any questions, you can leave me a comment.